Leave it. Here. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Where's your room? Down the hall. I'm going out for a while. Now? Oh, we just got here. I'm going back. Where? Nobody gets rid of me that easy. I'm gonna have another talk with that girl and she's gonna change her mind, you see. You're crazy. I think he followed us. Who? Did you see anyone? No. No. He's dead long ago. Is he? Yes, but that girl, now she's alive. And you know me, I'm gonna get her. The trouble we're in now is because of you and the girl. Look, stay here. Forget about her. Not a chance. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Now you stay away from her or you'll be sorry. Stangerson, are you threatening me? Maybe. That's a laugh. Look, you can risk your own neck if you want to, but not mine. I've got a right to protect myself and I'm going to. I mean it. You go back to that boarding house and I'll... And you'll I'll... do what? You haven't got the guts. I'll be back soon with the girl. Mr. Dribber. Good evening, ladies. Well, why have you come back? Is there something you've left here? Yes, you could say that. My cigar case. I believe I left it on the dressing table. Will you please wait? Well, now, Miss Charpentier, are you pleased to see me again? I thought you and Mr. Stangerson had gone to Liverpool. Uh, yeah, we missed our train. I left Stangerson in a hotel near Euston Station. It's comfortable enough as hotels go, but somehow it misses the coziness of this place. I'm going to give you a chance to change your mind. Please don't. Honor, you can pretend to be as high and mighty as you like. That don't fool me any. I'm offering to take you with me, maybe all the way back to Utah. That's if you act real nice and oblige. Mother! Honor, what's she got to do with you and me? You're over 21. You don't need anybody else to say so. I like you. I've taken a real fancy to you. We're going to get along just fine. How dare you talk to me in this way? Get out. Get out. Just as soon as I get what I came for. Let me go. My brother is here. If I call him... Oh, you won't do that, sweetheart. Mr. Dribble! Okay, you want money? How much? I'm a rich man. What I take, I pay for. So name your price. Mr. Dribble, you must leave here at once. Sure. But not empty-handed. Ah! Arthur! Come quickly! OK, 
kill you for what you've done. I'll kill you if you're here. No, Arthur. Oh. oh. No, Arthur, come back. Let him go. Have sir. Halliday's Hotel, Little George Street, and hurry. Hey, wait a minute. This is the wrong place. This isn't my hotel. Nobody lives here. It's empty. Look at it, you stupid... I've never read such boastful nonsense in my life. Watson, I find it difficult to eat my breakfast, read my times, and listen to emotional outbursts all at the same time. I do beg your pardon, Holmes, but really this uh. goes too far. I take it that you have read the article since you have marked it, eh? Yes, yes, I've read Well, what rubbish, eh? You think so? Here is a fellow who insists that by a person's fingernails, his coat sleeve, boots, shirt cuffs, knees of his trousers that any halfway intelligent man can tell at a glance uh, his history or trade or profession to which he belongs. Well, I admit that you, Holmes, from time to time have surprised me with your remarkable powers of observation, but even you would never make such a sweeping generalisation. Oh, but I would. What's more, I do. Oh, 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 come now. I wrote that article myself. You did? Yeah. I think you might have said so. Ah, oh, there seem to be no crimes and no criminals these days. What is the use of having brains in my profession? From the point of view of the criminal expert, London has become a singularly uninteresting city. Cha! No crimes to detect, or at most some bungling villainy that even a Scotland Yard official can see through. Oh, dear, dear. Uh, I wonder what that fellow's looking for. What fellow? Uh, here. Oh, you mean the retired sergeant of Marines. How on earth do you know that? Oh, oh retired sergeant of Marines. <laughs> Does something amuse you, Watson? Well, I was thinking that obviously you must know that neither of us is in a position to verify your guess. No. It seems that we have a visitor. Perhaps you'll be a good fellow and show him in. Would you be kind enough to show the gentleman up, please? Certainly, Doctor. Come this way, will you? Mr. Holmes, sir? From Inspector Gregson, sir. Ah, thank you. <laughs> There's no answer. <laughs> thank you, sir. Just one moment, my man. May I ask what your trade may be? Commissioner, sir. Uniform set away for repairs. Thank you. Previous there, sir, a sergeant in Her Majesty's Royal Marine Light Infantry. Thank you, sir. 
How on earth did you deduce that? What? What? Deduce what? what? That he was a retired sergeant of Marines, confound it. Oh, not now, Watson. We are expected at number three, Lauriston Gardens. Our old friends, Inspectors Gregson and Lestrade, had need of us. This letter mentions a crime. An unusual crime, if both officers have been called in. Get your hat, Watson. <coughs> it seems that my complaints of a few moments ago were premature. Lestrade and Gregson have their knives into each other. They're as jealous as a pair of professional beauties. So who knows? There may be some fun. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, Watson, about that sergeant of Marines. Yes. From the window, I saw an anchor tattooed on the back of his hand. Now, that's smacked to the sea. He had a military carriage and regulation side whiskers. There you have a Marine. Add to that an air of importance and a certain amount of command, and you have... A sergeant. Simple, really. As you say, Watson, it's simple, really. gentlemen. Mm -hmm. It's good of you to come, Mr. Holmes. I've left everything untouched. Except that garden. The herd of buffalo passed along. There couldn't be a greater mess. No doubt, Gregson, you'd drawn your own conclusions before you permitted this. I've had so much to do inside the house. I relied on my colleague, Mr. Lestrade, to uh, look after this. You didn't come here in the cab? No, sir. No, Lestrade? No, sir. Ah, Mr. Holmes, in this case, of course, quite a stir, sir. Beats anything I've ever seen, and I'm no chicken. All that we know so far is that whoever did it is wounded. The uh, blood, sir, all over the place. Is there no wound on the body? No, no sir. sir. <clears throat> and as you surmise, the blood would appear to belong to the murderer. Then Jensen died under similar circumstances in Utrecht in 34. Remember the case, Gregson? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I seem to recall it. Now read it up. You really should. There's nothing new under the sun. It's all been done before. Watson. <laughs> yes, you can take the body to the mortuary now. What do you make of that, Mr. Holmes? Written in blood, eh? The question is, what do you make of it? Well, I should say it was done by a murderer. Rach? Yeah, exactly. He was about to write the female name, Rachel, but he was disturbed before he could finish it. You mark my words, Mr. Holmes. When this case is cleared up, you'll find there's a woman named Rachel up to her neck in it somehow. Oh, yes. You can smile, sir. But you'll find the old hound is best when all's said and done. What's that you've got? Cigar ash, Mr. Lestrade. Hello, what's that? Here we are, a woman's wedding ring. You see, I was right. There's been a woman here. You'll find her name was Rachel. Sure, she loved them. He does seem to have a point, Holmes. Well, this complicates matters. Are you sure it doesn't simplify them? What did you find in his pocket? Russian leather card case with cards of Enoch J. Drebber of Cleveland, USA. Corresponding with the EJD upon yes, the yes, linen. Yes, yes. Hip flask, money, seven pounds thirteen shillings, two letters. One addressed to E.J. Drebber and one to Joseph Stangerson. At what address? American Exchange, The Strand. They contain steamship tickets. It appears that the deceased and his companion were about to depart for New York. You have made inquiries about Joseph Stangerson? Yes, sir. Nothing so far. And of course, excuse me, you have sent word to Cleveland? I telegraphed this morning for information on both Drebber and Stangerson. Is that all? All, sir. Well, surely there is a single circumstance on which the whole case could hinge. Will you not telegraph again? I've asked for all the information that I require. Hmm. But not about the woman, Rachel. Gentlemen, it would be robbing you of credit if I were to presume to help either of you in this case. You are both doing so well now, it'd be a pity for anyone to interfere. But I should like to speak to the constable who found the body. 
Well, he's off duty now, sir. His name is Rance. You'll find him at 46 Audley Court, Cannington Park Gate. Thank you. Come along, Doctor. We shall pay him a visit. I will tell you this, gentlemen. It may assist you. There has been murder done, and the murderer is a man. He is more than six feet tall, in the prime of life, and has small feet for a man of his height. He wore coarse, square-toed boots and smoked a Trichinopoly cigar. His face is florid, and the fingernails of his right hand are remarkably long. He came here with his victim in a two-wheeled cab, which was drawn by a horse with three old shoes and one new one on its off falling. These are just a few indications, but they may assist you. Good day, gentlemen. Mr. Holmes. Yes, you say the man was murdered. If that is so, could you tell us how it was done? Poisoned. Well, and by the way, Lucet, don't waste your time looking for a Miss Rachel. The word Racker is German for revenge. There's nothing like first-hand evidence, Watson. I know a good deal about this case already, but we may as well learn all there is to be learned. You amaze me. <laughs> no doubt. Well, those particulars that you gave to Mr. Lestrade and to Mr. Gregson, hmm? You can't really be so sure. Why not? Well, well, how'd you know about the carriage in which the uh, murderer and his victim arrived, for example? <laughs> Child's play. The marks made by the carriage wheels and by the horses who was in the driveway told me all I needed to know. And well, the murderer's height? Well, you said uh, over six feet. Yes, I did. But when a man writes on a wall, his instinct leads him to do so at the height of his eyes. Now, that writing was just over six feet from the ground. And his age? Well, I deduce that from his footprints. Any man who can take strides of four and a half feet could hardly be in the sear and yellow. Wonderful. Oh, it's commonplace. Well, is there anything else that puzzles you? Oh, uh, yes, um... Fingernails. Well, now... No, 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 wait, just one moment, please. Trichinopoly cigar. Oh, well, now, the writing on the wall was done with a man's forefinger dipped in blood. The plaster was slightly scratched in doing so, which would not have happened if the man's nails had been trimmed. Now, as for the cigar, I can distinguish at a glance the ash of any known tobacco because I've made a special study of it. In fact, I've written a monograph on the subject. Yes. You said the murderer had a florid complexion. Ah, now that was a more daring shot. You must not ask me about that at the present time. Uh, we appear to be arriving in Kennington Park Gate. We must make short work of Police Constable Rance. What did you do after you summoned Police Constable Murcher? Well, I went back into the house and I waited for Mr. Gregson to arrive. And was the street empty when Murcher arrived on the scene? Empty? Yes, as good as. Now, what does that mean? Well, I've seen many a drunk man in my time, but not many so crying drunk as that cove. He was at the gate when I came out. A drunkard, you say? And what sort of man was he? Well, like I said, he was an uncommon drunk sort of man. He'd have found himself in a station if we hadn't been so took up. But his face, his clothes, didn't you notice them? Well, he was a long chap with a red face. Florid. But what I could see of it, the lower part was muffled round. And what became of it? Well, I moved him on. I had enough to do what with... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Had he a whip in his hand? A whip, sir? Yes. Yeah. I'm afraid, Rance, that you will never rise in the force. You might have gained your sergeant's stripes last night if you had arrested that drunkard. Indeed, sir. May I ask how? Because he was the murderer. Come, Watson, or I should be late for my concert. Good day. Ah, there you are, Mr. Holmes. I was hoping I'd catch you. Oh, is there some news? I thought I'd save you any further trouble. The case is as good as solved. Indeed. You may not remember, but there was a hat lying beside the dead man. Oh, uh, yes, made by John Underwood and Sons, 129 Camberwell Road. What of it? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, well, I've managed to trace him from it to a private boarding establishment. I'm going over there now to make the arrest. Now, ma'am, you are the owner of this establishment? Yes. And Mr. Enoch J. Drebber was one of your boarders. He and another gentleman were staying here, Mr. Stangerson. You know that Mr. Drebber is dead? Yes. When was the last time you saw him? He and Mr. Stangerson left here last night at 8 o'clock. About 8, you say? And neither of them returned? No. Yes. Mr. Drebber came back an hour later. Alice! Never. There's no use in our lying to this gentleman. He can find out the truth easily enough. Very astute of you to realise that, miss. So the man Drebber returned here. What then? Mr. Drebber and the other gentlemen stayed here for three weeks. Mr. Stangerson was a quiet, reserved man. But as for Mr. Drebber... Well, after 12 o'clock in the day, he could hardly ever be said to be sober. He was an extremely coarse person. His manner towards the maidservants was disgustingly familiar. On one occasion, he actually attacked my daughter. 
A tank? I don't know what else one could call it. He came into my bedroom and tried to kiss me. He was drunk. And then? I would not have such a person in my house. I told him he must leave at once, and that was the reason for his going. Mr. Stangerson went with him, of course. And that happened last evening. I cannot tell you how glad I was to see the last of that man. I mean, quite apart from everything else, my son Arthur was home on leave from the Navy, and he had such a violent temper. If he had found out what Mr. Drebber was really like, there's no telling. Just so, ma'am. No. no. No, what I meant was, Arthur is so devoted to his sister. Not that he would ever harm anyone. Oh, we'll see about that, ma'am. Now, what happened when Mr. Drebber returned him? I, I really don't know what to say. I was alone, and he'd been drinking. He asked me to go away with him. When my mother told him to leave, he offered me money. Then my mother screamed, and the next thing we knew, Arthur was in the room. Mr. Drabber ran out into the street. Arthur followed him, they struggled, and then Mr. Drabber jumped into a cab. Arthur ran after it, and... Well, I, I don't know anymore. At what hour did your brother return? I don't know. I see. He had his own latch key. So he must have returned after you and your mother went to bed last I night. I suppose For so. For all that you know, he could have stayed out until two or three this morning. Right, Constable. I must ask you for an account of your movements after you left here last night. I've already told this, Constable. Then tell me, please. You were seen trying to catch up with Mr. Drebber. Well, I didn't. He was in the cab. It was going too fast. I gave up. Go on. Well, I felt too angry to come straight home. I went for a walk. Alone? Yes. Until what hour? I don't know. It must have been after 12 o'clock when I arrived home. A long walk, wouldn't you say? Possibly. I was very angry. Oh, oh I believe you. Shall I tell you what I believe happened? You caught up with Mr. Drebber. No. You fought with him again, this time somewhere in the vicinity of Morrison Gardens. With a stick or with your fist, you struck him a blow in the pit of the stomach, perhaps, that would kill him without leaving a mark. Then you dragged the body into the empty house where it was found. The blood, the wedding ring, the writing on the wall, all these were intended to throw the police off the scent. Oh, Arthur, tell him the truth. You didn't kill that man. Say you didn't. Oh, Mother, of course he didn't. How can you think such a thing? I don't know what this is all about. I swear I never saw Drebber again. You must come along with me. Take him in charge, Constable. But he's innocent. All in good time, Miss. Constable. Oh, it's you, Holmes. Oh, you quite startled me. Mm. This Lorison Gardens business seems to be preying on your nerves. To tell you the truth, it is, rather. I don't know why I should be more case-hardened after my Afghan experiences. Oh, it's understandable. Mystery stimulates the imagination. Where there is no imagination, there is no horror. I dare say. Oh. How was the concert? Oh, magnificent. You had no visitors? No. Hmm. Are you expecting some? Yes. Look in the lost and found column. First announcement. I had that advertisement placed in all the evening papers on my way to the concert. Found in the Brixton Road this morning, a plain gold wedding ring. Apply Dr. Watson, 221B Baker Street, after six this evening. Forgive me for using your name, Watson. My own might arouse some suspicion. A wedding ring? Why do you think the murderer came back to the house after leaving it? For the ring. Of course. He dropped it while stooping over Drebber's body. After he left the house, he missed it and hurried back, only to find the police in possession thanks to his own folly and not putting out that candle. Why, of course, the ring. Why else would he return and risk capture? Well, you think he will read that? Watson, put yourself in his position. It must have occurred to him that he could have dropped the ring in the street after leaving the house. Well, naturally, he will look in the lost and found columns. He will come. We shall see him within the hour. You had better load your service for revolver, Watson. I hope to take him unawares, but it's as well to be ready for anything. Yes, yes, mm. of course. One can't be too careful. No. Hello, what's this? Huh? Yes. Oh, well, there's uh, some aspects of the case that seem to admit of no explanation. Uh, just, uh, just a few notes, that's all. How came the two men into the empty house? What became of the cabman who drove them? How could one man compel another to take poison? Where did the blood come from? What was the reason for the murder, since robbery had no part in it? Mm. You sum it all up very succinctly, Watson. It's very good of you to say so, Holmes. I just tried to while away an hour or two. Well, now, I'm ready. Admirable. 
And I believe not a moment too soon. Our man has certainly wasted no time. Watson, just sit down and try to look as natural as possible. By the way, uh, did a telegram come while I was out? What? Telegram. No. Oh. Why? I sent a message to Cleveland requesting a certain item of information. Oh? Huh? Yes, yes. Well, what sort of information? The name of the murderer. The name of the murderer? Oh, quiet. Come in. There's a person wants to see you about an advertisement in the standard. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Ahem, <coughs> ahem. Yes, madam, and what can we do for you? Begging your pardon, good gentleman, it's this as I've come about. It's a, a gold wedding ring in the Brixton Road. The ring is yours? Oh, no, sir. It belongs to my girl, Sally. Is, uh, is it? Ah, oh, the Lord be thanked. Uh, Sally will be a glad woman this night. This is it. This is the ring. Take it, then, and I suggest you tell your daughter to be more careful in future. I'll tell her, sir, and thank you. Thank you both a hundred times. Not at all. Entirely my pleasure. Good night. Good night. Oh, our Sally will be a happy girl this night. Oh, 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 oh. oh Holmes, really. What a splendid murderer. Oh, oh, oh. And the ring you gave her. I bought it this afternoon. <laughs> Quiet! Give her time to get downstairs. Let me have your revolver. If I'm not mistaken, she'll lead me straight to our man. No, what? Wait here. She get with at Houndsditch. This is where you. She's gone. But she can't be. She. Hey, hey. What about me fair? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> You're a tough. Jumped out? Holmes, it's impossible. Are you trying to tell me that that feeble, tottering old woman jumped out of the cab while it was in motion without either you or the driver seeing her? Old woman be damned. We were the old women to be taken in. Must have been a young man and an active one too, besides being an incomparable actor. But do you mean to say that he is, she, she, uh, that he was the one no, who... No, no, no. Our murderer is taller. Watson, I would not have the Scotland Yarders know about this for the world. That certainly never let me hear the end of it. Well, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of, Holmes. Even I was deceived. Remarkable performance. What did you say, Watson? <laughs> Riding in the streets, well, how do you like me, eh, boys? The way I use my hands and feet's a little bit tricky, eh, boys? I often feel my anger rise Through hearing vulgar people's cries I sometimes wish myself in rags When the boys shout, watch our back the feathers of Chaya when they see me on my bike. But I'm a skilled as it goes. As I fly, the boys will shout. Does your mother know you're out? I only say, salute my bicycle. Oh! Ah! May I have a word with you, Mr. Rutgers, Mr. McDermott? Oh, sorry, gents. Can't talk. I've got to do my change for the finale. I should not detain you long. No, you're not going to detain me at all, Governor. Look, um, why don't you come round after the performance, eh? What I have to say concerns a wedding ring. Hello. You two still here? The ring you gave me earlier this evening. Well, I don't know anything about a ring. Here, who let you back here anyway? You came to number 221B Baker Street. Ah, what are you talking about? I've, uh, I've never seen you before in my life. You disappoint me, sir. 
I should have thought an asses of such superb accomplishments would risk anything, even the gallows, rather than deny his own talents. It appears I was wrong. Come, Watson. Gallows? This is a matter of murder, Mr. Daly, and I fear you are implicated. Murder? My colleague and I thought you might prefer to talk to us rather than to the police. However... Oh, wait, wait, don't go. Look, um, I don't know anything about a murder. It was, uh, it was a wager, see? He bet me five quid. Who did? Him, the, the big bloke. Look, it's like this, I, uh, I was in the ale house next door, we see, uh, when he, he comes in and he, he buys me a drink. Started to tell me what a great performer I am. So we gets to chatting. He says, uh, dressing up on the stage as a woman is one thing, but I wouldn't be able to take anybody in face to face away from the theatre. So it's a wager, right? Five quid. He sees this, um, this advertisement, you see, in the newspaper. And he says, I'm to dress up as this old girl from Allen Fitch, and if we get the ring, He'll pay me. And you succeeded brilliantly. I compliment you. And no doubt you gave him the ring. Oh, yeah, he was waiting for me in the alehouse. Hey, I don't think he's there now. No, I'm sure he isn't. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Yeah, look, uh, wait a minute, gents, before you go. Uh, as I say, I don't know uh, nothing about a murder, you see. It was a wager, like I, like I say. Look, I've got to go on now. Weren't many trouble, were there? No trouble, Mr. Daly. Oh, well, that's all right then. Uh, <laughs> nice of you to treat it like a sport. Come in and see the entertainment sometime. My treat, eh? <coughs> you never asked him what the man looked like. I know what he looks like. And tomorrow I shall know his name. Our difficulty will lie in finding him. It's strange, isn't it? Whilst we're seeking one murderer, Gregson has his choice under lock and key, and Lestrade is seeking a third. <laughs> you mean the secretary, yes. Stangerson? Yes. Perhaps he's found him already. Perhaps. Makes no difference. Stangerson is unimportant. Gentleman, he said he was expecting. Been waiting for you since yesterday. Huh? Is this a room? Yes, sir. Mr. Stangerson, I'm a police officer. Open the door, if you please. Open it up. Stangerson dead. But he doesn't give the details of how. All it says here is that a body was discovered in a hotel near Euston and the police have declined to make a statement. Do you think it could have been suicide? Oh, hardly. Otherwise, Lestrade would have been here at Cockcrow, boasting that the murderer is dead and the case closed. No, you may be sure that this is another murder. Why have you not been sent for? Oh, patience, Watson. Give Lestrade time to lick his wounds. After all, his murderer has turned into a victim. Gregson has made an even worse blunder. He's arrested someone who was innocent. <laughs> but they'll both be here. Give them time. Is that the message you expected? Yes. It arrived late last night. The plot thickens. The man we are after appears to be a Mr. Jefferson Hope, an American, of course, like his victims. <laughs> What on earth? I should say it's the Baker Street Division of the Detective Police Force. Ah, yes, oh. sir, it is. God oh, oh, alive, you place. Oh, I do you. not, please. Ten, ten. Oh, keep saying off my candle, Hunter. Uh. Wiggins, in future, unless I tell you otherwise, you will come up here alone to report. The rest of you must wait in the street. Now, Wiggins, have you found it? No, sir, we ain't. Mm. I hardly expected you would, not so easily, but you must keep on until you do. Now, here are your wages. Oh, thanks, Gav. Thanks. Oh. Now, be off. 
and come back with a better report next time. Right, go. Let's go. Come on. There's more work to be got out of one of those than a dozen on the force. <laughs> ah, gentlemen, we've been expecting you. Come in. Now we shall have some news with a vengeance. Mr. Holmes, the man Stangerson is dead, murdered. Hmm, that I surmised. Poisoned, no doubt. Uh, no, Mr. Holmes, he was stabbed to death. Stabbed? Huh? And written on the wall of the hotel room was that word. Yes, yes, it was know. the word rucker in letters of blood, I know. You know, Lestrade, I'd have given a month's money to have seen your face when you walked into that room and saw the body. You were that sure that it was he that had killed Trevor. Yeah, well, at least I didn't put the wrong man under arrest, Gregson. Now, look, Lestrade, I'm warning you. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, you're a witness. I am witness to the most infernal squabbling. Gentlemen, stop this childishness at once. Lestrade, you say the man Stangerson was stabbed. Uh, yes, he was. What did you find in the room? Oh, nothing out of the way. Uh, oh, yes, there was this uh, telegram in the dead man's pocket, uh, sent from Cleveland a month ago. Thank you. J.H. is in Europe. Uh, as you can see, it's unsigned. What else did you find? Uh, well, the motive wasn't robbery. There was over eighty mound, pounds in the dead man's purse. Uh, there was his personal belongings. Yes, you know, yes. A novel lying beside the bed, uh, his pipe on a chair, um, a small box containing a couple of pills, and um, a glass of water. Thank you, Lestrade. You have provided me with the last link. My case is complete. I beg your those pills. Yeah? But, uh, those the pills. Could you lay your hands upon those pills? Yes, I've got them with me. I was taking oh. them with the other things to the police station. Thank eh? you. Thank you. Doctor, now, what do you make of these? Well, one can hardly judge the properties of a pill by its appearance. However, I should imagine from their lightness and transparency that they're soluble in water. Precisely, sir. What's so special about a couple of pills? Everybody takes pills. I take them for me liver. I doubt if these would benefit your liver estrade or your health in general. You mean they're poison? He said Trevor was poisoned. Hey, Mr. Holmes. No, 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 you're destroying valuable evidence. Those pills have got to be sent for analysis. I have all the necessary equipment to make my own analysis here and now. You are at liberty to take half of each of these pills and give them to your chemists or whoever you please. The gentlemen, do be seated. I shall be occupied for perhaps an hour. Ah, well, Holmes, I confess that for a moment I thought I had blundered. One of those pills is perfectly harmless. The other, however, contains a most deadly poison. But why should one be harmless and the other one well, not? What the devil does it matter? Look, Mr. Holmes, I'm sure we're all very impressed with your cleverness, but you said your case was complete. Now, if you have any suspicions, I demand to be told them. Quite right, we've already had two murders. If we give this assassin time to commit a third, you can set your mind at rest on that score. There will be no more murders. Come in. If you please, sir. What is it, Wicky? I have the cab downstairs, sir. Good boy! Tell the driver he is to come up. I shall need help with my boxes. Holmes, are you going on a journey? Gentlemen, I am grateful to you for bringing me into this matter. Otherwise, I should have missed the finest study I ever came across. The scarlet thread of murder running through the colourless skein of life. It has been a pleasure to unravel it. Unfortunately, you both overlooked the most important clue of all. Uh, not a clue, really, but a matter of common sense. What was that? Why, the purpose of the wedding ring. By the way, Lestrade, why don't you introduce a pattern like this at the yard? The spring works like lightning. Come in. Oh, Candy, just give me a hand with this box, will you? Thank you. What the devil? Holmes, what are you doing? Well done! 
Gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Mr. Jefferson Hope, the murderer of Enoch Drebber and Joseph Stangerson. Mr. Holmes, I am glad to see you. I trust you will pardon my lack of self-control a few hours ago. A perfectly natural reaction, Mr. Hope. You know, if there was a vacancy for chief of police, I, I think you'd be just the man for the job. The way you kept on my trail was really something. It wasn't very difficult. All the circumstances pointed to the culprit being a cab driver or someone disguised as one. I simply told some street adults to go around the cab stands asking for a driver named Jefferson Hope, saying there was a fare waiting for him. They were not to give my address, of course, merely to lead him there. I wasn't pretending to be a cabbie, Mr. Holmes. I, I took the job because I needed the work. And who better than a cab driver for dogging a man's footsteps wherever he went in London? London? I followed Drebber and Stangerson for more than a year. And over two continents. But why? No, Watson. We mustn't lead Mr. Hope into making admissions that could prejudice his trial. I'm not going to stand trial. But you, you surely don't no, mean... No, no, no. I'm not thinking of suicide. I, I have a heart condition. They call it an aortic aneurysm. I saw a doctor last week. He, he told me I've been living on borrowed time for months. I think it was only the hope of catching up with Drebber and Stangerson that kept me going. Well, now it's finished. Even so, you'd better not say anything more. No, no, I want to. I, I wouldn't like to be remembered as a common cutthroat. I, I was in love with a girl back in Utah. Drebber wanted her. He offered her money. Then he... He threatened her. When that failed, he, he waited till I was away prospecting, and he and Stangerson abducted her. By the time I returned a month later, she and Drebber were married. She broke her heart over it. The ring. I took the ring from her finger when she was dead. I swore that Drebber's dying eyes would rest on that ring, that he would know why he was being killed. I followed them everywhere. When they needed a cab, it was mine they found waiting. I was the one who picked up Drebber when he came out of that boarding house. Gave me the address of a hotel near Euston. That's how I knew where to find Stangerson. He was so drunk, all I had to do was drive him straight to that empty house in Lauriston Gardens. You. You dog. I followed you from Salt Lake City to Petersburg. You have always escaped me. What do you want? Punishment has caught up with you at last. One of us will not see the morning sunrise. You wouldn't murder me. There is no murder. Let the high god choose between us. Choose and eat. There is death in one, life in the other. I shall take what you leave. Let us see if there is justice on earth, or if we are ruled by chance. Choose.
I told you, Watson, that our man had a florid complexion. There had been no struggle, and yet there was blood by the body and elsewhere. A nosebleed seemed to be the most likely cause. It was the blood that gave me the idea for writing the German word for revenge on the wall. I thought it might have led the police off on the wrong scent. Yes, I realize that. But a real German invariably prints in the Latin character. You did not. However, I don't suppose the Scotland Yarders would have known that. Later that night, I, I went to Stangerson's hotel. I got into his room through a window. I offered him the same choice as I had offered Drebber. But instead of jumping at the chance of safety, he went for my throat. We struggled. I drove my knife through his heart. I have no regrets, Mr. Holmes. They both deserve to die. Do you believe I am a murderer? Yes. There we differ. There was no murder, Mr. Holmes. I executed them. 